What would you do if you were given £300 a month to get yourself a new car? Well, that's the position I find myself in. Just after tax, the car allowance with my new job comes in at around £300 a month. So the way I see it, I've got three options. Do I A, lease something brand new? Do I B, take a personal loan for £300 a month and own something at the end of it? Or C, do I buy myself something a bit older, a bit more interesting, and see if I can make a profit and pocket the difference? And in this series, we're gonna look at the third option. That's right, we're gonna see if this Ford Mondeo from 2008 actually beats a brand new lease deal. Are we gonna come out in profit at the end of it, or is this gonna be a massive financial heartache? Well guys, I guess there's only one way to find out. Well, let's take a quick look at those three options. Option one, leasing something. Well, we've had a Kia Sportage kicking around the channel for quite some time. And if you look at a brand new one of those, it's about 300 pounds a month. Think 298 pounds a month with a three and a half thousand pound deposit. And you can get yourself straight into a 1.6 plug-in hybrid Kia Sportage. It's a great car. Fuel economy isn't the best on that, but otherwise, do you know what? As an all-rounder, it's pretty good. The only problem with that is you need a three and a half thousand pound deposit to get yourself into that car so for me i think we just strike that one straight off the list now option two is get yourself a personal loan now if we look at it 300 pounds a month gets you around about nine thousand pounds and at today's current interest rates it probably looks like you're going to pay back about 11 so it's not too bad so for nine thousand pounds what can you get yourself well the world is your oyster you could get yourself a pretty decent bmw 5 series an Audi A4 or something a bit sporty that's not going to be too outrageous because again this car needs to blend in this is for me to go out and about park in the car park at work and what I'm trying to do is not look like I've just spent 200 pounds on a Ford Mondeo that's MOT runs out in about three weeks and so here it is my 2008 Ford Mondeo 2.2 Titanium X Estate what a beast. So why did I choose a Ford Mondeo? Well, there are a couple of reasons. I wanted something that could just blend in. I wanted a real people's car, something that I could park in the car park and it would just blend in. Driving it down the motorway, it just looks like any other car. And the good thing with this Mark IV Ford Mondeo is they facelifted it in 2010 to give you the 4.5. And those were in production up until about 2014. So actually, as far as cars go, it kind of passes for a 10 year old car albeit it's missing a slight facelift. So actually, I don't think that's too bad for blending in at work. Now, another reason I chose the Ford Mondeo is the spec. These things are outrageous. So even the entry level LX, or certainly the LX model back in the day, even that came with electric windows, air conditioning, and a heated front screen, which compared to other cars out there, but the base model is pretty good. Now, this being the Titanium X has got a whole host of extras. So let's take a look and see what we've got. To start with, we've got automatic headlights. Not so much of a big deal these days, but this is from 2008. Electric windows all round, electric mirrors. It's also got a multifunctioning steering wheel. That's right, we've got all the controls on here. We've got the stereo, we've got the menu, and we've also got cruise control. That's right, this car, comes with cruise control, we've got climate control, we've even got heated seats. And then we've got the seats. That's right, we've got these half leather perforated seats. And yeah, they've got these big chunky bolsters. I don't think these are sport seats. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm not a Mondeo expert, but I know they did do the Titanium X Sport. Um, which had red uh, had red stitching on the seats, and this clearly doesn't. So this isn't a sport. The grills are slightly different. Um, the seats are slightly different, but I think that's it. We've got sat nav that on this doesn't work. That's right. Um, we've got no GPS signal on this car whatsoever. So if we want sat nav, that's something we're going to have to sort out. We've got CD in dash, I know. We've then got um, a CD changer. And then it also has a line in as well. So there's a auxiliary in. Standard radio, no DAB. It's got Bluetooth, so your phone can connect straight to it. It's even got a push button start. Um, 
We've got front and rear parking sensors, which on this don't work. So we're gonna to have to take a look at that. It's got a heated front screen, which is absolutely amazing, especially coming up to winter. And again, in the back of the car, I mean, it's just, it's quite, it's not a bad place to be looking at it. Now I know what you're thinking, Tim, how did you get this car for just 200 pounds? Well, I've got a bit of a confession. This car used to be owned by my brother. He owned it for 10 years and took it from 70,000 miles up to the 213,000 miles that it sits on today. That's right, this car has done a lot of miles, but he serviced it at Ford every year without fail. If something needed doing, he fixed it straight away because this was, this was his car. This is what got him to work. I know that this car, although it's got a lot of miles on it, has been incredibly well looked after. And I genuinely believe that there is a lot of miles left in this car. I certainly hope so. This is the 2.2 litre turbo diesel engine. So it's the same engine that I had in that Land Rover Freelander. And in the Freelander, it was amazing. So I think in this, it should be even better. This thing can't weigh as much as the Freelander, can it? It's got 172 brake horsepower, and I think it's about 295 foot-pound of torque. So actually, it should go down the road quite nicely. If we take a look under the bonnet, yep, there it is. We've got the same 2.2 we had in the Land Rover. It's, yeah, I mean, it's a well-used engine. There's not really much to look at under that plastic cover. So yeah, guys, here it is. Now, the other thing with this car is that it's got about two to three weeks left on its MOT. So my brother took the view, he's had it for 10 years. He's done a load of miles in it. It's gonna need some money spent on it to get it through the MOT this year. So we thought, you know what? I'm just gonna buy myself a nice shiny new Volvo and kick this thing down the road. Now, he offered it to We Buy Any Car and they offered online 200 pounds, which is probably scrap value for this. But then he thought, you know what? I can't be dealing with those people. It's not the first person to have said that. And so he just asked me, did I want it instead? And I thought, a full Mondeo for 200 pounds? How can you say no to that? The boot on this thing is absolutely massive. So as a bit of a parts hauler, uh, a car just to chuck stuff in and go, do you know what? I think it genuinely, yeah, it's a great car for that. Now looking in here, we can see the carpet has clearly seen better days, but actually in terms of the space that we've got, there is a load of room for activities back here. Dare I say it, you could even camp in it. Let's not try that. Please don't suggest that down in the comments. So what do you think? So far, so good or have I bought myself a load of problems? We've got Goodyear Eagle F1 tires all round with loads of tread left as well. So that's a win. It's also got a tow bar. So again, that can get us in all sorts of trouble, but really useful because we often need a car to pull a trailer around. So actually having a tow bar is worth its weight in gold. Right, let's get in it, fire it up and take it down the road. And that way I can tell you what we've got in store for this car over the coming months. Okay, so out on the road, what have we got? Well, as I said, this is 172 brake horsepower. So it actually gets down the road pretty nicely. Um, it's a big car, so it's certainly not gonna break any land speed records. But other than that, when it's up at cruising speed, it really does get down the road pretty quickly. The thing I have noticed with this is in first gear, it feels like it's a bit sluggish. It kind of almost feels like it bogs down a little bit. Now, I don't know if that's just the way these Mondeos are mapped to kind of help preserve the clutch. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it just feels that off the line, this thing isn't the quickest. And it certainly felt like that automatic Freelander was certainly a lot quicker off the line than this. So what's the plan with this? Well, as I said at the start of the video, I get car allowance from work to basically get myself a car to get out and about see people and do my day job um, so it means that i needed something that wasn't going to be as sort of noxious as my little mini cooper s with a big shouty exhaust and some peeling paintwork but i needed something that would blend in now obviously this thing being a mark 4 one day was facelifted up to the 4.5 and they were produced up until 2014. So what this means is that this thing blends in quite nicely, whether it's in the car park at work or sitting outside Waitrose. But what it means for this car is I've got 300 pounds a month to spend on it. Now, 
the idea of this is to see if we can't come out of this with a profit but i'm not going to scrimp we're not just going to run this car into the ground just to say wow look you can drive a shitbox till the wheels falls off and pocket a load of cash no as a car person i want the very best for this little car so what we're going to do is we're going to spend money on it every month we're going to fix it we're going to modify it and ultimately we want to have a better car at the end of this than we started with so what do you think is this a good decision is it the right car would you have chose something else and what is the plan well this is my daily now so i guess the plan is to drive it we're going to put as many miles on this as possible it's got 213,000. let let's see how many more we can put on this car we're going to keep it for a year and in that year we're going to see how we get on we're going to chuck the money every month that 300 pounds into the kitty and then we're going to spend it on this car so not only maintenance because that's important but also mods that's right we're going to take that money and if we don't spend it on maintenance we're going to spend it on mods we're going to upgrade this car and we're going to make this thing into the supreme daily on a budget now i'm pretty sure i've seen apple carplay for these so that would be a great upgrade to this thing to get rid of the standard setup and make it a bit more modern inside because otherwise heated leather seats lcd dash or part of its lcd um do you know what? it feels quite modern inside it is really just that stereo that lets it down so if we have apple carplay in there yeah this is going to bring this thing bang up to date another thing that you might not have noticed is the paintwork on this is dull faded and scratched now there are places on here that i just don't think i'm going to be able to bring it back with a polisher but when you look down here you can see this car hasn't really had any polish on it for a good probably for 10 years i don't think my brother has ever polished this ed you're an animal but i tested it earlier and this is how it came up so this is the uh this is the dull paint and this is after it's been polished you can kind of see there's a line just uh just there so actually that paintwork seems to come up all right so with a bit of polish we might be able to get this thing looking a little bit more respectable without eating into the budget so how does the budget stand well this is month one and that's a four one day that cost 200 pounds so we've got 100 pounds left now we're not going to spend that we're going to put that in the kitty for next month the mot is due and Honestly, I don't know what that's going to cost. Hopefully, no more than £400. Because again, we're going to do a lot of the work to it ourselves. But this is also due a service. As I said, it's been serviced every year at Ford, just before the MOT. Well, it's just before the MOT, so it needs a service. So that's going to have to come out of the budget for next month as well. Other than that, I mean, it looks pretty decent. It looks like a fairly respectable family car. And if it didn't have... 58 on the number plate i think you'd be hard pushed to tell the exact age of this car so what do you think did i make the right choice is it a good car what would you have got for the money or would you have spent a little bit more let me know down in the comment what would your car of choice been to buy on a budget to beat a lease deal but guys here it is next month we've got the mot we're going to service it we're also going to see if there's any money left in the pot for some upgrades so make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell notification so you're notified next time we upload a video i'm going to go and take this car home if the next video is up you'll see it here if not you'll see the video on the land rover freelander with the same engine that we bought that we did a quick flip in and out to make a profit i'll see you guys on the next one